and my topic or my heading is this God replaces that is the heading God replaces and the question that we need to ask ourselves is very simple when how and why those three words they speak about time and also we need to put who who when why And we need to ask ourselves those hard questions. And uh, in the book of 1 Samuel, I read some few scriptures in the Bible. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter number 2. I'm going to read line number 22 to line number 25. First Samuel chapter number 2 line number 22 to 24 now Eli who was very old had about everything his sons were doing to all Israel and how they slept with the women who served at the entrance to the tent of meeting so he said to them why do you do such things? I hear from all the people about these wicked deeds of yours. No, my sons, it is not a good report that I hear spreading among the Lord's people. And if you check the words, Lord's, it is in the capital letter. So there was a rumor going on in the midst of the believers. If a man sins against another man, God may mediate for him. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will intercede for him? If a man sins against another man, God will mediate. You need to underline that word. But if a man sins against the Lord, who will mediate? That is the reason why I'm telling you it is a hard message. His sons, however, did not listen to their father's rebuke. For it was the Lord's will to put them to death. Father, it is my prayer that as I speak this word to the healing of your people, Lord, and even to my healing, Jesus, Help us to understand the reason and the essence of this message to us. And why you always give us a scripture in our lives, Lord. It is not a, mess, a simple message, Jesus. And because of this reason, I give myself as a vessel lady to be used of you Lord every scripture that you have deposited in my tongue and whatever you want me to say Jesus give us the courage and the boldness to speak it as it is for your own glory I decrease so that you may increase in Jesus name we do pray and give thanks Amen uh, this is a story that uh, all of us we have interacted with it in one way or the other because the starting ones chapter number two it is the prayer that Hannah made and we know Hannah uh, was a barren woman and she passed through a very hard and difficult times 
in the presence of Penina. That is not where my message is. But in those days, there was a priest by the name Eli. And the law of a priest was to make sure the altar is guarded and all the requirement of the altars are served through the appointed priest of the day. Therefore, if Eli was living in our days, probably he could be the one in charge of this altar. And there were requirements which the Bible clearly outlined on the law of a priest on the altar. And Eli had two sons. I don't want even to give you their names because you know them. Uh, uh, it's Macalion and Pinehas. Those were the names. And since the father was a priest in their local church, in their village, I believe early together with his family were worshipping together in that local church. And the boys probably grew desiring to become like a father. And probably early saw a gift in them and he gave them a law in the altar, on the altar to do what he was supposed to be doing since he, is, he was old. But the Bible does not indicate that Eli was unable to attend to his assignment. The only one thing the Bible outlined, two things, and one is not for his own advantage, is that he was so big and his eyes were glowing dim. And the Bible says that he was sitting down, not in the temple, somewhere else. And his sons engaged themselves in a lot of wickedness. My message is, God can replace Instead of Eli's sons following the steps of the father, they decided to take the advantage of what was happening on the altar. The generosity they were being accorded to and the gifts that they were receiving, they decided to exploit, misuse them for their own wildly precious and a message was given through the prophet of God to Eli and he was told exactly what his sons are doing in the altar they are behaving as priests remember the bible does not call them priests but they were serving on the altar The father forsook his assignment and gave it to his sons. Thinking that a gift, a gift can be transferred. I want to say this to your healing and let it sink deep in your heart. I am a pastor here. The pastoral gift in me cannot be transferred to my son but it can be imparted I cannot compel my son to be like me in the ministry because 
Paul clearly stated that it is the spirit of the Lord who give us gift to men. He give gift to men according to the measure of grace. It is the spirit who give gifts to men. And in this context, there are things that we can learn. We see how this young man became so wicked. And because of the father forfeiting his responsibility in correcting them, in resolving their problem, because we need to have two important qualities for effective discipline in our spiritual life towards the word of God instead of early being firm in resolving their problem and having a corrective action against what they were doing. He just took it casually. And God was angered. And he brought a son, a baby, by the name Samuel. Because he was done with the house of Eli. There comes a times in our lives when we forsake, when we ignore the assignments that the Lord has given to us, I want to say this candidly. There are things that we can do, and God sees that we deserve to be replaced. There are some mandates that God has delegated to man. And if we are not cautious enough, and if we are not careful to us, we can be replaced. Every mandate of the kingdom of God comes with instructions. And also it comes with a requirement. And on this portion of scripture, it was the law, it was the mandate of Eli to make sure that his sons has carried themselves light free according to the requirement of anyone who serves on the altar. The Bible says in the book of 2 Timothy chapter number 2 that a soldier does not entangle himself or engage himself with Sepharian's affairs. They are mandates that the Spirit of the Lord deposits in our lives. And it commands us not to engage ourselves with some affairs of this world. I went to somewhere yesterday on a certain event and the MC decided to sing certain songs. And one of them woke up and said, my friend, this is not the environment for such kind of a songs. And I was so happy. He took charge and said, no. You cannot bring such kind of severian affairs on such kind of an event which is founded through the godly people. And he said, no. And that is what Eli missed. He missed his role as a mentor. 
I want to be so candid on this. You may not be a priest on the altar. But the Bible says that in the, in the book of 1 Peter chapter number 2, line number 9, that we are shoes and faces. We are pleased in our own levels, in our own capacity. As far as you are born again, you are a pleased. And there are a mandate delegated over your life as a pleased. There are some laws. There are some assignments you need to articulate as a priest in your own level, in your own capacity. According to the measure of grace, the Spirit of the Lord has deposited over your life. And if paladventure we ignore and forsake our laws that we need to pray as a priest in our own capacity and we allow wickedness to come and praise our mandate then there is no other things that we deserve except to be replaced and I want to say this as your pastor We are where we are and who we are because of the choices that we have taken in our lives. Some of us are supposed to be far, but there's something that you have forsaken. There are things that you have not done it. When he received the word of God, he had all the authority to excommunicate his hands from the altar until they are disciplined. If I was early by then, I could have left my comfort and go back to the altar, regardless of my weight and my dimness, and take back my law as a priest on the altar. And I want to charge all of us let us go back to our law, to our assignment. Please don't delegate. Don't devolve. Some of those duties that we have delegated and devolved to our sons in the spirit, sometimes it can cost us to be replaced. And the Bible says, I have finished with the house of Eli. And as a result of that, he raised Samuel to take over. Now the most amazing thing, Lydia, is that when God is replacing you, he does not bring people from a fallen land. He brings somebody within your court, thinking he's a son, thinking he's a daughter. Little did you know that that person will come to replace you. Shake on follow and Moses. It was not easy to deliver the children of Israel from the hand of Pharaoh. And a decree came that all the firstborn be, be killed. And the mother of Moses decided. Even if you kill all other boys, mine, no. And he, she did what she did. And she found herself in the house of Pharaoh, breastfeeding her own son, so that Moses may grow, or may grow, may grow in the house of uh, Pharaoh, so that he can understand the language of Pharaoh the language of the Egyptian and what they can do and what they, what they have. Anyone he was mature enough, he left it. And later he came to become the deliverer of the children of Israel from the land of captivity. Shekon, first Samuel chapter number 16. 
if you go to chapter number 15, you see the instruction that Saul was given by God. Go and destroy all the Amalekites and kill the king of the Agagites. But Saul decided to be merciful than God. The instruction of God was very clear. Go and eliminate them all. But Samuel, uh, Saul decided to be more merciful than God. And as a result of that, he was replaced by David. Check on the book of Esther. We read of a king by the name Texas. He was married to a wife by the name Fashiti. And one day the king prepared a banquet because he wanted to entertain his friends. And that night, pride came upon the queen and she decided to assume the king. And she was displaced by a young girl from the tribe of Jews. Her name was Esther. Her name was Esther. We need to be very careful in our priestly laws and assignment and duties that has been delegated to us to serve this generation that we are living in lest we may be replaced. I know I'm talking to people who have gone to the scripture in the book of Romans chapter number 10 and line number 29 if I'm not wrong. Either Romans 10, 29 or Romans 11, 29. The Bible says that the giftings of the Lord, they are irrevocable. Yes. The, uh, the gifting of the Lord are not irrevocable. Yes. I agree with you. Maybe you have gone to the book of Numbers and you have said that God is not like a man that he may lie. Not like the son of Adam. That he may renounce what he has said. I agree with all those scriptures. But if we fail to do what we have been called for, it is easier to be replaced because there is no vacuum in the mandate, in the assignment, in the work of God. Every now and then, God always gives us a scripture for the season. And how we respond to that word of God means a lot. Because the word of God and our action of response to it must go together. When we are subjected to disciplinary, we need to embrace it. We must love the disciplinary and warning of God's word in our lives and take it positively. Those are the lessons that we can learn, we can learn from that scripture. Note this. Our attitudes toward the word of God is largely shaped by our relationship to the God from whom the word comes from. Our attitude toward the word of God is largely shaped. We need to be very careful because we are living in a society if the word is to rebuke us, we don't love it. Is that true, Carol? When it is a rebuke, it's not our portion. But our attitude toward the words, the word of God, is largely shaped by our relationship to the God from whom the word come, comes from. 
It is not us who give the word. It is God who gives us the word. The word to Eli was very clear that his sons are misbehaving. That his sons are defiling the altar. That the sons are not right to serve on the altar. And Eli took it lightly. And it costed him the mantle of priesthood in his house. And it was transferred to the house of Samuel. Because of forsaking the instructions of the king, Queen Fashiti was replaced by Esther. Shamal was replaced by David. And in the New Testament, Judas was replaced by who? Who took the position of Judas? Is it Bartholomew? Are you the Bible scholars? Because the number was to be complete. When Judas became a betrayer and went and hung himself, the disciples casted lots to replace him. Mm. We need to be very careful. God's words has to be used and obeyed as it is uh, as it is for it is the absolute truth to man every word of God written in the Bible is for the benefit of man but we are living in a society whereby we only take the scriptures that pleases and fit us you are going to be blessed you are going to they are good, it is biblical. But the same sword, if you read to the book of Titus and the book of Hebrew, the Bible refers the word of God as a double edged sword that separates between bows and malos. Amen. It cuts in both sides. It is the same word that speaks about blessings, it is the same word that speaks about curses. I told you that gospel is hard. Scriptures is completely trustworthy because God was in control of his lighting. Therefore, every word that comes to us released by God himself because he is the one who put it in the spirit of the lighter. The word of God is entirely authoritative for our faith and life. The word of God is very authoritative, is full of authority, is full of power. Because the word of God is our standard for testing everything else that claims to be true in our lives. If only any responded to that word of the servant of God, probably he could have saved his own generation, his own son, and the mantle probably could not have replaced or removed from his family. The word of God is our safeguard against false teaching and our source of guidance for how we should live. The word of God is our safeguard, is our shield against false teachings and our source of guidance for how we should live. It is our standard. It gives us the requirement on how to live and live living lightfully. 
The word of God is our only source of knowledge about how we can be saved. The word of God is the only source of knowledge about how we can be saved. Whenever God wants to speak to us, he does not use anything else. He uses his word. God uses his word to show us what is true and equip us to live for him. He used his word. The word of God is our standard on which truth is founded and the same word equip us to live for him. Not living for the world, not living for other people. I want to conclude by saying this. The word of God or the purpose of the word of God is to equip us to do good and to become good. I hope you have gotten that word. The word of God, the purposes of the word of God is to equip us to do good and to make us to become good. And finally, our knowledge of God's word is not useful unless it is strengthen our faith and lead us to do good. Our knowledge of God's words is not useful unless it is strengthen our faith and lead us to do good. And the same knowledge of the word of God was given to Eli. But Eli did not choose to do what was good. Instead, he continued sitting down, enjoying himself from the benefit of his priesthood. You know, there are benefits that we always receive. There are benefits entitled for the sons of the kingdom. I pray by the grace of God that those benefits will, become, will not become foreign of our destruction. That is my prayer. Allow me to conclude by saying this. If Eli knew what was to happen, he could have left his comfort and went back to the altar. I pray by the masses of God and I want to throw this as a challenge to all of us and I want to be very candid and clear to all of us and let this, let this sink in our ears and let it be understood well in God's kingdom replacement is little is little when I'm talking about replacement I'm not talking bit about your salvation I'm talking about what God intended to do with you. If you fail to show yourself worthy, then replacement is inevitable. Kevin, the gospel is hard. It's hard. No one can replace your salvation. But the gift in you can be replaced. The mandate given to you can be replaced. That is how serious it is. It is so serious. And I want to be very clear. Please don't misquote me. Don't misquote me. If, a, if Ellie was a good father, he could have laced a warning to his sons and tell them, my sons, what you're doing is wrong. A story is given in the Bible about the seed sower who went sowing seeds and he sowed four kinds of seeds. But I want to concentrate on the seed number three, the one that fell on the, throne, on the thorns. It germinated 
but it was shocked by the thorns. Definition of that scripture is that these are the people who, who hear the word of God, they receive it. The word start working on them like how it worked in the days of Eli as a priest and his son in his homestead. But instead of taking care, less pressures of this world overtake them, over, overtook them, he just relaxed. The reason why many of us can be depressed is because instead of worshipping the giver, we always worship what we have been given. Please, I cannot be able to finish that message. It is so deep in me. Even as your pastor, I'm making my personal prayers that I do not be depressed. I do not be depressed. I will not be repressed. That has been my prayer. That I may not be repressed. Because repressment is so real. It's so real. In fact, in the days that we are living, it is easy for us to be repressed. Some of the mistakes that we see, let me just lead something that I sent to you this week. It is a great mistake to think that God's assignment will fail because you abandoned it. Yet he had chosen you to do it. Remember we are always lifted by God because of his assignment. If we fail to lift up to it, to lift up to it, we frustrate his agenda and he does not take it lightly. We cannot take him at ransom. His judgment is always upon the disobedient, whether they have his mandate or not. It is always disastrous to think that God cannot anoint someone else to take your position when you rebel. How do you fail to honor your part and expect God to fulfill his? It is my prayer that no one under my voice will be replaced. Sons of the kingdom, let us arise and pray our law which we were called for. If you are intercessor, please intercede. If you are a worshiper, please worship. If you are in the choir, pray you are all well. Whatever the spirit of the Lord has called you to do, and to serve in his kingdom do and do it well because any failure can cost your replacement I'm saying this as your father I'm saying this as your pastor I've not, I'm not saying that you have failed but this is an awakening call. Brethren, let us wake up from sleep. Let us come out of our comforts. Because our comforts in this world is actually costing us a lot. Go and read that scripture. You will see that daily, and he was sitting outside the house basking in the sun enjoying the benefit of the altar while his sons were misusing the altar we can be relaxing enjoying any other benefits at our own expense it's a challenging message to all of us myself included and whenever this message we wish to but it is my prayer since our God is so merciful he is going to speak to each and every one of us he is going to quicken our spirit so that we can understand where we are failing to articulate and to do our assignment as it has been mandated to us just bow down your hand and respond.
to that word. Let's put to that word. Let's put to that word. The Bible says that if a man can ela to another man, God can mediate. But if a man elas to God, who can interfere? Those are the same words that I want to leave with us. They are hard words. They are hard words. They are hard words. They are so heavy in me. I don't know what the Spirit of the Lord is telling us. As a family of redeemed Makogeni. I don't know exactly what the Spirit of the Lord has seen in us. When I was trying to avoid this scripture, the Spirit of the Lord told me, you are behaving like Eddie. And I feared the most. I tried sharing this word with my wife. And it was so heavy to me. I tried lighting it. It was so heavy to me. It is my prayer. Even if the spirit and the giftings of the Lord, they are not irrevocable. If we forfeit our mandate our law, as a, and, a, and our law as the sons of the kingdom as pleased. And I want to say this, that repressment will not be objected. Father, help us to serve in the areas that you have called us. Help us to serve and serve faithfully. Help us not to be like the shrewd and unfaithful servant who went hiding his talent because he knew who you were. We are living in such kind of dispensation and that is the reason why there is no move of your power. That is the reason why miracle signs and wonders, they are limited, O oh Lord. But that was not your intention, our maker. My prayer this morning, Lord, to each and every one of us, is that you may revive us, Lord. Revive us, Jesus, Lord. Pray for your soul. Read for your soul. Make personal prayers. Nateazo katarabo. Some of the prayers that we need to make are prayers to repent. Maeketeazo katarabo. Because we have thrown the move of God. We have dread what God has been intending to do with us in this very era, in this very age. Because we relaxed, we entered into comfort soon. We forfeited our mandate. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have repressed the mandate of the mandate of God with the worldly commitment and mandates. Me, myself, and I, we are more important than the mandate of the king. The passion, the zeal that was pushing us to go selling our plots, to pay our tithe in full, to be found in the missionary work is no more. Where did that zeal go? Why are we allowing to replace our kingdom's mandates? With our elderly mandates. Father, I approach the seat of your throne with a repentful heart. I pray, precious Savior in heaven.
that you may cleanse us and sanctify us, Lord. Wash us again, Jehovah Father, by your blood, Almighty God of our glory. And speak to us clearly in a manner that all of us, we are going to understand that you are the one speaking, Lord. Where we need a rebuke, rebuke us, Lord. Where we need teaching, teach us, Lord. Where we need correction, correct us, Abba Father. Read the purposes of your word in our lives. Be done. I give you praise and I give you honor. In Jesus' name, we do pray and give thanks. Amen.